Hey guys, Sean here. You know, there was a time where gold was used as money. People bought things in gold, they saved in gold, and nations trusted each other because money was packed in gold. It was harder to play funny games with money, but today we are using fiat currencies that are backed up by nothing but trust, and this has led to multiple currency crises and an inflation rate that is fast approaching double digits. But all that might be changing down the road as gold is slowly being reintroduced back in the picture as money once again. Right now, Russia has announced that besides the ruble, countries, specifically the ones they list as unfriendly, can now buy its gas with gold. And to take things one step further, Russia's central bank has now declared that they are going to continue buying gold and this time they are going to do it at a fixed price. Now, while this isn't a return to the old gold standard that we know of where dollars were directly redeemable for gold, but Russia is rewriting the rules of how global trade is being done and this allows Putin to establish a new type of gold standard down the road if he chooses to. And in this video, we will discuss the significance of this move, what Russia might be planning with their currency and gold, because if everything goes Russia's way, we could very well see a timeline where the ruble is backed up by gold and might become a reserve currency to challenge the US dollar. So diving deeper into the details, according to the press release on the Bank of Russia's website, it states that Russia's central bank will buy gold at a fixed price of 5,000 rubles, which is around $52 for one gram of gold from March the 28th to June 30th. So at a glance, this seems rather low considering the market price of gold to be around $1,950 an ounce or almost $63 a gram. Now, the official reasoning is to ensure a stable supply of gold and help out their gold mining industry. And that is true, right? In the short term, they have just set a floor price for gold and other banks can sell their gold to Russia's central bank and be guaranteed at least that floor price of 5,000 rubles a gram. Now, on the surface, this looks rather straightforward. Russia is trying to acquire gold domestically to build their reserves and keep the local mining companies afloat. After all, you have to remember that Russian gold refiners are banned from accessing the LBME market, which is the biggest gold market in the West. This also comes on the back of the United States trying to sanction and freeze Russia's gold from any transactions in the West as well. So this ruble for gold swap is a lifeline to really help Russian miners sell their gold for cash to operate. However, there could be a deeper agenda to doing this and it is linked to the one-two punch Russia just did to Europe with gas. At first, they only demanded rubles for their gas, but now they are accepting payments in gold as well. This means that they are effectively open to transacting directly with physical gold for their commodities. A world superpower now recognizes gold as money, and this is something we shouldn't take lightly. Now, this is significant because if you are deemed as an unfriendly country to Russia, you only have two options now to buy the energy supplies that you really need. You either pay in Russia's domestic currency, the ruble, or use your gold. And when we are talking about gold, we mean the physical precious metal itself. Physical gold that gets shipped physically to Russia with zero counterparty risk. We are definitely not talking about a piece of paper or any futures contract. So think about it. On one hand, they have effectively priced their gas in gold and their central bank guarantees buying gold at a fixed price. But the big question is, can we call this a gold standard? After all, you still can't exchange rubles directly for gold. It is a reverse one-way street where you can only convert gold to rubles. Now, the true value of gold or the ruble or even the dollar is the ability for it to be traded into something useful that you need to survive, right? And in this case, it is natural gas for now. So with this move, Russia is forcing the world to really de-dollarize or diversify more into the ruble, right? If you want to access Russia's gas market, you need to find a way to either raise enough ruble or physical gold. So while it isn't the classical gold standard, it does link the ruble, gold, and natural gas together. And if Russia begins pricing their oil or other commodities in gold, they have effectively created their own petrol ruble. And this time, the petrol ruble is backed up by Russia's own vast amounts of commodities, which is now as good as gold. If I can buy oil using both the ruble and gold, they are now legitimate forms of money to transact at least in Russia. On a side note, this means that now the US dollar and the euro are now suddenly less useful to the world at large because Russia just isn't taking those two currencies for their gas. 
but let's take this one step further, right? Now, gold is a physical metal, which means in huge amounts, it can be rather inconvenient to transport around. We are talking about shipping costs, security costs, and even insurance costs if anything goes wrong. And if the ruble is as good as gold to buy Russian energy, this gives countries all over the world more incentive to diversify into the ruble instead of transacting directly with gold. You save time, you save costs, and it can be done electronically. And what does this do? It circulates the ruble globally even more. Now, this entire strategy is what America did exactly back in World War II. They sold tons of weapons and equipment to Britain for gold. They built up their entire gold reserves and through the Brenton Woods systems, they linked every currency to the US dollar, which is backed up by the trust they had in physical gold. So what Russia is doing more or less is a similar playbook with some modifications here and there. So if we look carefully at this, Russia has essentially split the world into two camps friendly countries that can transact with them in their local currency and even Bitcoin in addition to rubles and gold, and countries that can only use rubles or gold for Russian energy. In a sense, if you want to have more options to buy from Russia, you have to be a friend to them. If not, you will either be forced to buy and support the ruble or send over your precious stash of gold. If this works, this is a triple win for Russia because now they can support their ruble, build their gold reserves and gain more support internationally. Now, am I saying Russia will replace the dollar as the reserve currency because of this? Not really. I believe it will still take much more than this, but it is another straw on the camel's back of getting the world to de-dollarize. Countries now have a legitimate reason to diversify into gold or the ruble because either avenue means less money pouring into the US dollar. Now, if this comes through Ray Dalio's warning of the US dollar losing its reserve status might actually come true. And if the world starts hoarding rubles, it would allow Russia to really enjoy the benefits of a world reserve currency. We are talking about borrowing money at lower interest rates and the greater buying power to grow their economy faster. Exactly how America became today's global juggernaut. Right now, we can slowly see a changing world order where new alliances are being suddenly created under our noses. The Saudis are discussing with the Chinese about selling their oil for yuan. An Indian rupee ruble trade arrangement might be nearing where India can now buy Russian resources using rupees. This should be very shocking to the people in Brussels and Washington because I believe at the heart of this is hard money, right? Which country all countries hold the most gold and resources to really inspire trust? I think the sanctions imposed by the United States on Russia might have been effective, but now has set off a chain of events that are gradually backfiring, right? The great diversification might be happening. And the most obvious asset I believe money will flow into would be gold, right? Specifically physical gold. And that's the beauty of the precious metals. It can't be debased. When you hold it physically, there's no counterparty risk, and it is the perfect medium of trade in a low trust environment. No one will want to hold a lot of currency that's being mismanaged to the point of 7.9% inflation. You know, I really think the writing's on the wall that one day gold will come back in a big way as money. Now, we won't know if it will return directly as a means of currency where things are priced directly in grams or ounces of gold. More likely, it could be used to back up at least partially a currency like the gold standard that we know. Either way, I think we could be in store for rising gold prices in this environment of low trust and chaos. It's really getting crazy, you know, there's always something new every single day and I'm personally finding it hard to keep up. You know, I think we need to take steps to proactively gather wealth and that is why I am still stacking gold and silver and specifically gold, right? You know, I believe that gold could form the backbone of tomorrow's money and let's say that it doesn't, right? And paper money is still being used for another 100 years. At least I know that my purchasing power will still be stored in an asset that has been proven for thousands of years to preserve value. You know, there's a very famous saying by hockey legend Wayne Gretzky, I skate to where the puck is going, not where it has been. So where do you think the future of money lies? I'll leave the answer to you. Right now, we are seeing titanic changes to the world order and I think this was going to come sooner or later. Now, this was baked into the cake the moment we left sound money in 1971 and we are seeing the consequences today. High inflation and currency wars. And it's time to take steps to position ourselves no matter who wins. Buy the dollar? Buy the ruble? No thanks, guys. 
I'd rather just buy gold. So there you have it guys, let me know what you think. Will Russia really attempt a gold standard 2.0? Will gold come back into the picture as money? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for more gold, silver and finance videos. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon.